class. I hope you're all well and welcome to our last week of home learning and to all of my videos. So hopefully we'll have a really good week and then I should be seeing you next Monday. So fingers crossed, let's hope all goes well. So start off today with our speed sounds. So pause the video, have a go through and then do a couple out of order. Our tricky words for this week, as you can see, they all belong to the same family. They've all got that I-N-D at the end. So the first word is find, F-I-N-D, then kind, K-I-N-D, mind, M-I-N-D, and behind, B-E-H-I-N-D. Okay, so have a go at reading those and make sure you're writing them and practice that. This week we are thinking about the long U sound. Now with this, the double O, it can make a short sound like in book or look, we're looking at the long U sound like in moon and spoon, which is related and linked to the long U sound that we learn later on. We're going to look at different ways of spelling that. So the long U spelt with the double O's is on phase three on phonics play. So you can have a go at an activity on there. You've got some words on your sheet in your pack. You can have a go at reading those. You might think of some others and you can have a go at writing them underneath. So making sure you're thinking about the reading and the spelling of those words. Spelling shed, there will be a long ooh activity on there and there'll be our tricky words as well. So have a go at spelling shed. Our guide to reading this week, we're monitoring and summarising again. And our question is, what did we learn about? And that's about a character or a setting or something. So you can put some, uh, you can put something at the end there. So what did we learn about Sir Charlie Stinky Socks? You could put that in at the end of the question, or you can just have it as an open question. So think about what you've learned about a character or a place or what's happened, um, and try to answer that using evidence from this book that you've been reading. Start today with some counting. Have a go at counting in ones, twos, fives and tens. Try counting back, try doing you say three, I say three, so that you're making sure you're learning those numbers in order. This week, we are thinking about subtraction. Subtraction is shown by this symbol here. This means subtracting, it means taking away from another set. So when we're subtracting in year two, we always start with a larger set and we're taking away a smaller number and this comes from that set. It's not another set, it's part of this set that you take away and then we end up with our answer at the end and our answer here will always be smaller than the number that we started with. Now that's in year two, when we get later on, maths does change, but in year two, our answer is always smaller than the number that we started with. When we're subtracting, we might be able to do these in our head. That's fine, sometimes we can do that. We might need to draw the deans out, so you might be drawing the numbers out. You might use a number line, it doesn't matter, as long as you are accurate and you get the right answer. So today, have a look. We're not crossing the tens boundaries today, so when you're looking, the number that you start with is going to have a bigger set of ones than the number that you're taking away. So if we were drawing the deans and we were drawing 68, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, we would draw our eight, and then we can take off our 23 nice and easily, okay? And then what we're left with is our answer. We could use a number line to help us work this out, and we count backwards. So 68 would go over here. We're subtracting 23, 10, 20, one, two, three. So each of these is a jump of 10, and each of these is a jump of one, and then we are counting back. So we've got 68, 58, 48, then we've got 47, 46, 45. And if you're using a number line, this is the place to watch out when it swaps from counting back in tens to counting back in ones. You can do number lines in different ways, so you might, want to jump back in a big jump of 20, 
you might be able to take the three off all in one jump. Doesn't matter how you do that, as long as we're accurate and we get the right answer. Our literacy, we're still using that story about the papaya that spoke. So have a listen and watch of the video of me retelling the story. In class, we've got really good at retelling that story. We especially like these bits here and everybody joins in with that. Ah! Ah, so have a go at listening to the story. See if you can start joining in with retelling that story. Now today, we're going to imagine that we're the farmer. Okay, and I want you to think about how it felt when the papaya spoke to you. Now, papayas aren't usually some, something that speaks. So I imagine that you felt quite shocked. You might have felt quite surprised. Yeah, you might have felt quite frightened. I think I'd be quite frightened if something started speaking to me that didn't usually talk. You might be worried. You might be scared. Okay, so have a think about lots of those feelings that you might be feeling inside if when that papaya started to speak to you. And then today, what I'd like you to do is write for me a paragraph. So as we've talked about before, a paragraph is five or six sentences describing how you were feeling. And to make your writing better, try to remember to use those conjunctions. So you've got things like because, when, or when would be a good one. I felt shocked when the papaya started to speak. Okay, so when's a good one today? Um, so I don't know if we can use that one, but, oh, I felt, I felt worried, but also excited because this had never happened to me before. So that's one that we could use. Um, we might be able to use the conjunction and. So have a go at using those conjunctions to extend your sentences and really lift your writing and to make sure that you are explaining what's happening. Um, and you can start off however you want with your writing. So I think I, I'm going to start off, you won't believe what happened to me. So you won't believe, oh I don't like the word believe, believe what happened To me yesterday. So you need a sentence that starts your writing off. Doesn't have to be the same as mine, it can be different to mine. Could even put an exclamation there, you won't believe what happened to me yesterday. I think I might actually do that. So you won't believe what happened to me yesterday. I went out to pick a papaya and it spoke to me. I felt really shocked because papayas don't usually speak. So have a think about what you're going to write and make sure you're writing those sentences and a nice paragraph about how you felt. And I can't wait to see some of those. So have a good morning and I'll see you in the afternoon. Bye for now.